doing a test with the microphone. Missing that and the other thing. Good morning, everyone. This is John. I'm in the village of Caritina, which is uh, where my grandmother is from, from my father's side. Uh, I never got to meet her. Um, she died before I was born. Um, this village is pretty cool. It dates back um, at least a thousand years, for, as far as I know. At least there's a church here that's a thousand years old and a fort that's almost a thousand years old. And down below in the valley, there's this uh, city called Megapoli, which isn't very big, but it means big city. Um, but next to it, there's um, ancient ruins, Roman or Greek, I'm not sure. So this, this, this place is pretty old. Um, yesterday, we got into town uh, to see uh, where my grandmother was born. And um, um, the house she was born in, it's still there, but it's pretty dilapidated. But it was pretty cool to see. Um, and the village itself, you can drive through in a minute. Um, the roads are super narrow, um, so, but it just fits with a car. And I thought I'd come up this morning to uh, do some photography um, as the sun's coming up, which it's still slightly over the, below the horizon, but it's catching it, these mountains over here. Um, but as I was driving up, I looked out over the valley and uh, there was a cloud inversion going on. I just, you know, to get technical, I had to pull over and and just admire the beauty. Um, it's pretty amazing. Um, Thomas Heaton had this video a while back, um, the top things you must do as a landscape photographer, at least once in your life. And high on his list is a cloud inversion. And he's right. When you get out and see one of these, it's amazing. I don't know how uh, you uh, predict cloud inversions. I'm sure there's ways to figure it out with the weather app. I don't know how to do it, but if you know how and can plan it, I highly recommend uh, getting out to see uh, a uh, cloud inversion. I'm gonna do a couple quick photos and let's head up to the village. Kodak Portrait 800, again rated at ISO 400, uh, loaded up, and um, I'm just using one lens for now, it's 28 millimeter. The lens I'm using is a 28 millimeter. Um, I came here up to this spot, it's around the corner is where my grandmother's house is, but uh, I really love this uh, church uh, bell tower and the fort at the top. So I'm just walking around. I don't really have a big agenda, but uh, let's uh, get in the shot. Another setting I'm doing is that for most of the part I'm doing aperture priority. Um, so I don't have to really think about the shutter speed too much, but uh, for this shot, I walked up to where it's sunlit and I exposed on there and I the camera t said to go to 1500 on shutter speed with f8 so that's what i'm doing <laughs>
noticing a lot of the plants because you can smell them. Um, you can smell a lot of herbs. Um, yesterday with my cousin, I was asking him, you know, what people used to eat here, at least, I don't know if used to is the word, but because um, when you go to a lot of restaurants around Greece, um, you see a lot of similar menus with it's like souvlaki, euros, a lot of meat, um, moussaka. Um, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, rep, um, a lot of the restaurants are the same and a lot of them are really good. Don't get me wrong, but, uh, it's sort of rich people food, you know, meat is a rich people food. Um, back in the day, even now still Greece is pretty, really poor. Um, and so a lot of people, they grow on their own, grow their own vegetables in their yard. And like, this is a squash plant of some kind. And they take these flowers some squash, some rice and herbs, oil, mix it up, put it in the flour, cook it up, eat it up. And it's cool to think that stuff just growing along the side of the road. Um, little sit tidbit.